Well, hyperthermia, as the name implies, is hyper meaning high and thermia is temperature. So it's the use of high temperature uh, heating to actually impact cancer. It's actually, the concept of it is not new. It's been around for a long, long time, actually since the beginning of documented medical history. Um, say Hippocrates used to talk about uh, using you know, high temperature and to induce a fever to help cure all types of diseases. And when you look at, say, the, the data out there with the use of high temperature heating and cancer, there's a lot of research out there showing that when you use high temperature, cancer cells don't like it, they get stressed out, and you can actually make them more vulnerable, fragile, and you can actually destroy them with using high temperatures. And so is that how hyperthermia affects cancer cells? Um, does it have any other effect? Or? Well, I guess it depends on how you use hyperthermia. There's generally three different types of high temperature heating to impact cancer. One of them is to directly fry them. It's called ablation, where you're going into a tumor and boom, you're frying them. The second one is called local, where you're heating a general area. And, um, and the third way is actually using whole body, where you're actually heating the whole body up to a high temperature. And by high temperature, I'm meaning beyond 39 degrees Celsius. So the regular body is 37 degrees, you're going to 39 degrees and even up to 41 degrees Celsius. 41 degrees Celsius is, is quite high. Um, mm -hmm. Is it dangerous? Well, you know, the, the use of high temperature heating is a stress on the body. It definitely is a stress on the cardiovascular. And it's something that you have to screen for every type of patient. You know, if someone, say, had a pacemaker in my practice, I wouldn't be giving them hyperthermia. <laughs> and so, and, and, and you know, if, if there's someone who's really frail and, and their constitution is not that strong, it wouldn't be something that you would be looking for for a, a whole body treatment. And so these are the things that you have to individualize for every type of uh, case. Um, how do you induce this condition um, in your patients, and how, for how long is it sustained to, to, to have an effective treatment? Well, in, in my practice, what I use, is, there's a, a medical unit that's called the Heckel 2000, where they use an infrared type of technology. So similar, you hear about infrared with these saunas, but it's different. And, this, and, and it's different in the sense that it's, it, people are lying flat inside this kind of tent where their head is out, so for claustrophobia, <laughs> and, uh, and you're actually heating them up, and you're heating them to, to attain this targeted temperature. Now the thing that people don't know is that it takes time to, to increase your body's core temperature. By core, I don't mean the skin, I mean the organs, close to the bones, that kind of temperature. And it takes time. And, and to impact the core with heating takes about 45 minutes at least of intense heating just to start impacting that core and the temperature to go up. So when people are doing a hyperthermia treatment whole body, people are in there for a good three to four hours. So you're, you're impacting the core, it takes about an hour, and you're e reaching the target temperature another hour or so, and then you're, you're sustaining that high temperature for another hour. So and then you're cooling them down after that as well. And during that time, they're obviously being monitored because it is a stress. So people, for, for example, were being monitored with their EKG, respiration rates, blood pressure, temperature. They're receiving oxygen. They're giving IV. Oh, well, what is inside the IV? Well, in the IV, they're getting support treatment, uh, like so electrolytes and, and, and sugar. And they're also receiving, depending on the treatment that they're getting, is because, because high temperature heating makes cancer cells vulnerable, you can put in medicines that are, say, designed to kill cancer cells at that time as well. And so you're getting a, an additive effect. And that's one of the values of using hyperthermia. Um, who, who would be good candidates for this treatment? Um, We've already talked about you know people who are vulnerable and and you know you're using pacemaker might not be very good candidates, but in terms of people taking chemotherapy, um, should they take hyperthermia before or mm -hmm. during or afterwards? Well, right now there are medical centers studying the use of hyperthermia along with chemotherapy. So, say for example, a patient is receiving a, a cycle, meaning they're getting a certain chemo every three weeks, say. Mm -hmm. You want to use hyperthermia very close to that chemotherapy time. Because remember, high temperature heating makes cancer cells vulnerable. And then when you're infusing the chemotherapy medicines, it can actually impact the cancer cells uh, better. 
And what's really fascinating that I found with the research I've seen with hyperthermia, you know, there are those patients that say they've done chemo and they've been resistant to the chemo, it's not working anymore. There's a, there's a research paper with, say, ovarian cancer where they are, they are giving the, the same chemotherapy agents, they're adding hyperthermia to the equation, and in those groups where the, the chemo wasn't working, now with the heat, it is. They're responding to it. So it tells you the value of, of using high temperature heating in, in patients. When compared to normal cells, um, why do cancer cells seem to be especially susceptible to you know, increased elevated temperatures? Yeah, you know, you know the cancer cells is that they're odd. You know, all they know how to do is grow. You know, so they rob the body's energy and they grow. And the analogy I like to give is say, imagine a brick wall. You know, you have these nice uniform bricks that make up a wall. A cancer cell, while they make up a wall, the bricks are all different shapes and sizes. So the structure of them, the integrity, is not that strong. So they're vulnerable to stress and strain. And, and heat is a way to stress and strain those walls out so that they become more fragile or leaky or, or etc. And that's where the use of high temperature heating is, is quite valuable. So this is the hyperthermia unit that we use in cancer care. It's the, the Heckel 2000, and this unit is from Germany. And what happens here is a patient lies flat on a table. The head is out on this way, and the whole body is covered up in, in the, on this side of, of the unit. So as we speak, actually, there is a patient who's receiving a treatment for his cancer. And um, the, the head out is, is there. There's a DVD player. There's a fan just to help out the patient as well. And because, the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, this treatment is a bit of a stress on the body, it's really important that we have monitoring tools and hydration and etc. So let me just show you some of those right now. Um, here, for example, is our trusty patient heart monitor. As you can see, there's the, this is the, the heart EKG. This is the respiration rate. This is the, the pulse rate and also the oxygen saturation. And there's also a temperature probe on the, on the, the patient as well. This is really important to uh, monitor the patient. If things go wrong, it, uh, it tends to make noises. We can always see to make sure how comfortable the patient is. Um, it is a bit of a stress, this type of treatment, so it is normal for the heart rate to go up and the pulse rate to go up. And uh, so the patient currently right now is, uh, this patient, for example, is, is experiencing a little bit of the strain from the, from the temperature. Uh, currently, he's at about 38 degrees and ideally want to be at 39 and above. The patient is also receiving, um, if you look on here, this is a, the, the IV bag where they are receiving uh, hydration, nutrients, plus also receiving um, medicines that are designed to attack the cancer as well. And that's why they're doing this type of treatment to augment that and to also augment some of the radiation that he had done um, as well. And uh, there's also a oxygen machine, and that's what's making that noise um, to provide oxygen content. And there's a DVD, there's a fan, and this is our, our unit. So if you want to find out more information about hyperthermia, um, you could contact our office, or you can go to www.lemmo.com. Thank you.